Hey everybody, Jake here. Um, today I'm going to show you something that I kind of figured out and I know everybody's been waiting for a an update on this and I'm going to give it to you today. By the way, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do so by clicking the little button below. And I've got some other stuff coming out and I also have some other ideas for this refrigerator that I'm sure you are not going to want to miss. Okay, let's not waste any time. As you can see, I had some ice built up and it's the usual. You start to hear that grinding noise, the fan. It sounds like a baseball card in the spokes of a bicycle. And you know when you hear that sound, you know that the ice is building up and eventually the fan is going to stop. Already your refrigerator is not going as cool as it used to be because it's just uh, not working right. So as you can see, I'm going through the process of defrosting it. Now this was probably, I want to say about eight or nine months, which is pretty good because in the past it would freeze up like every three months, sometimes two months. So eight or nine months was not a bad duration. It actually gives you a pretty good opportunity to completely clean your refrigerator out. Not that this is a good thing, but hey, I'm trying to look on the bright side. Okay, so as I mentioned before in at least a couple of other videos, when you defrost the refrigerator, either turn it off completely or unplug it. In this case, I unplugged it as you can see. It's gonna become very obvious to you in a minute or two the reason why you wanna keep it off and unplugged while you have this cover off. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so you can see. What I'm trying to point out to you is that there's no ice. It's water right now, okay? It's unplugged, the machine is either off or unplugged, and all you're looking at right now is a wet coil. But what happens when we put the plug back in? So I'm gonna go back here, put the plug back in. As you can see, it's in the wall, and I turn the refrigerator back on. And let's just see what happens to the coils when that plastic cover is off and the coils are exposed to room air. We could just speed right through this. What you're looking at is about four and a half minutes shortened down to about 17 seconds. Now if you keep your eye on the coil, you will see some ice starting to form and you'll see some frost starting to form on the coils and on the fins. Look closely. What's basically happening is the moisture from the air is condensing on the cold coil and then freezing. What I did to actually speed up the process a little bit is I, at this point, grabbed a respiratory nebulizer, just put some regular water in it, and I put it over the fins while the machine was plugged in. I'm actually only doing this to prove a point, and that is that any amount of humidity or moisture in the air that passes over those coils while that machine is plugged in is going to freeze. Now, that heating coil is supposed to melt the ice every now and then when needed. It has a little thermostat in there. What it's supposed to happen is the cooling coil is supposed to shut off and the heating coil is supposed to kick on and any amount of ice that has built up, if there is any, should defrost, it should drip down into the hole and be removed. Okay, take a look what's happening with the vapors that are coming off of this nebulizer. Look what they're doing, they're going straight down into that drain area. And what's gonna happen when it hits the drain area? It's gonna freeze, turn to ice, and it's gonna completely clog up that opening. This is also, I'm just trying to prove a point here. See what's happening to that vapor? Straight down. Now at this point, just to let everybody know, this is about 10 or 15 minutes of the refrigerator running with the cover off. And look how much ice is already forming in about 10 or 15 minutes. This is because the fins are totally exposed to air. Now look right here, that's an excellent shot of the water vapor going right into that hole. Look at that. All right, so enough of all that. Now let me show you what I did to not so much fix it, like I said, but to slow down the freezing process so that way, even though it's not solved, you don't have to do this every month or so. You might be able to get, you know, seven, eight, nine months, maybe even a year out of it. 
Here I am at this point just defrosting it again because I'm about ready to fix the problem and put it back together. All right, on my refrigerator, up here in this area, which is closest to the fan, this area tends to get totally frozen up first. And then, of course, the bottom part. So let me show you what I'm doing. Get yourself a roll of aluminum foil tape. It's about 5 to $10 at Home Depot. I don't care what brand you get. They all work. Now, on most air conditioners and refrigerators, as you can see in certain situations, there is a certain degree of insulation on certain lines. Since I don't have the styrofoam insulation, what we're going to do is we're going to make our own insulation by simply wrapping paper towels around certain problem areas, and then we're going to use the tape and tape it up. I'll speed through this a little bit. All right, once you have your areas wrapped up very nicely, you're going to break out your tape and you're going to pull strips off and split it, do whatever you have to do, and tape that insulation that you just created around that tubing and up against the back wall the best you can. And I'm going to speed this part up also. Okay, if you've taken your refrigerator apart as many times as I have, I guarantee you, you have a lot of broken pieces of styrofoam over here on this cover. And unless you replace the cover, you're going to have a hard time figuring out what broke and how to fix it. I will address the cover as the last part of this video. I decided to insulate this time the bottom coils. Last time I did not do it. Here I am wrapping some paper towels around it and taping it as well, and I'm going to speed through this. I'm going to spray a little cooking spray on here, make sure it comes off easy next time. And let's get this cover back on the way we've always done in the past. We're going to put our screws in and tighten it up nicely. After you get the cover on, you're going to dry it with a paper towel. And we're going to use the same tape and we're going to seal the cover on the sides. I was actually going to tape up the holes this time but I didn't do it. I still might do it since that's where a lot of the ice builds up. I don't know. I know it needs a little bit of ventilation. I just don't know how much. Anyway, listen guys, this is the reason why you need to subscribe. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and check out some of the other videos on this channel.